In this video tutorial, I will guide you through the steps of creating a process model in Super Pro Designer. The example will illustrate the key initialization steps involved with the creation of any type of process. However, this tutorial deals with a simple batch process. Continuous process modeling will be discussed in a separate video. Also, if you'd like to follow along with the model but don't have Super Pro Designer, please make sure to visit our website www com, as you can see on my screen, where you can download an evaluation version of the tool. In addition, you can also download the full Super Pro Designer manual and several papers that discuss the tool through the literature page. This tutorial corresponds to the example presented in Chapter 2 of the Super Pro manual, which is the process that you see on my screen. For more detailed information on this example, make sure to study the material in that chapter. The model itself consists of two unit procedures. The first is a reactor where various materials will be charged and a stoichiometric reaction will be carried out. Let's bring up the reaction that we'll consider in this unit procedure. I can do that by right-clicking on the unit procedure, selecting Operation Data, clicking on my React Operation, and in the dialog that pops up, selecting the Reactions tab. Through this tab, I can then bring up the reaction stoichiometry by clicking on the Edit Reaction Stoichiometry button. The reaction of this example consists of component A reacting with component B to form a component C as viewed through this dialog. Furthermore, we'll assume that component C precipitates out of solution and it is recovered through the second unit procedure which consists of a plate and frame filter. In this unit procedure, the solution coming out of the reactor will be filtered and then the cake will be washed and transferred out. I'm now going to close Super Pro Designer to show you the steps of creating a new model from scratch. To open Super Pro Designer, select the program shortcut on the desktop or in the installation directory of the application. To begin working on a new process file, select the option named Start a new process file from the dialog and click OK. After you choose to start a new process file, the Process Operating Mode dialog appears. This dialog box allows you to set the primary mode of operation and the annual operating time available for the entire process. Super Pro Designer gives you the option to model in either batch or continuous mode. Semi-continuous modeling is also possible. For this example, I'm going to choose the batch operating mode and I'm gonna keep the default annual operating time. Let's now click OK to open the main process flow sheet area. Now that we have opened Super Pro Designer and chosen the mode of operation, our first step to create the model is to register the pure components that we're gonna use. To register components, choose the Tasks menu from the main menu bar, select Peer Components, and then click on the Register Components option. This brings up the Components dialog. Note that nitrogen, oxygen, and water are registered by default in every new process model and cannot be deleted. For this example process, we'll need to add heptane to the list of registered peer components. Super Pro Designer is equipped with an extensive database containing many components and their properties where you can search for components you'd like to add to your simulation. For example, to add heptane, we can either scroll down to it in the list, or we can begin typing heptane in the box, and the database will automatically scroll to the correct location. Next, we simply need to click Register to add heptane to the list of registered peer components for this process model. If a component is not available in the existing component libraries, we can create a new one. For this process, we'll need to create components A, B, and C. These components will represent the reactants and products of a simple reaction. To create component A, click on the New button on the Register Peer Components toolbar, and in the New Component Definition dialog that appears, fill in the letter A for the name field. 
Notice that as you type, the contents of the name field are automatically copied to all other fields. You can always adjust these fields to your convenience. Furthermore, notice that at the bottom of this dialog, you can choose to initialize the properties of the new component by copying them from some other database component or registered component. Let's say that for this component A, we would like to assign the properties of another component besides water, say sucrose for example. To do that, I can use the drop down component list to search for my component, or I can type the component's name in the box, and the program automatically scrolls to it. Let's now select the component and finally click OK to register the component. Notice that component A has been added to the register peer components list. Let's now follow the same steps to add components B and C. For that, I'm going to click on the new button again to add a component. And this time I'm going to type B. And for this component, I'm going to register the property values of water. So I simply click OK. I do the same for component C. Now that we have registered all our components, we need to edit some of their properties. To access the properties of component A, for example, highlight the component by clicking on it, and then click on the Properties button on the Register Peer Components toolbar. This brings up the Peer Components property dialog for component A. Through this dialog, you can view or edit a component's physical and environmental properties, cost data, and regulatory information. For the purposes of this example, the only physical parameter we will be concerned with is the molecular weight. To edit the molecular weight, click on the Physical Constant tab, and in the molecular weight area, we can adjust the molecular weight to the proper value. Notice that the molecular weight displayed corresponds to the one of sucrose since we copied the properties of that component to component A. For this example, we're going to change the molecular weight of component A to 150, so I simply type 150. Then I click OK to close the dialog. Next, we also need to change the molecular weight of component B, so I follow the same steps in order to edit it. For component B, we're going to use a molecular weight of 25. Finally, we need to adjust the molecular weight of component C to 175. At this point, it is important to mention that SuperPro Designer is equipped with a user database that allows you to store self-defined components which you can access and register when creating other models. Through this dialog, you can access the database by selecting it from the source database list and through the deposit button you can store your components. This completes our initialization of components for this simple example. We can now click OK to exit this dialog. Our next step in building a model involves the addition of unit procedures. A unit procedure is defined as a series of operations that take place within a piece of equipment. The types of operations available depend on the type of unit procedure you're using. SuperPro Designer is equipped with a large selection of different types of unit procedures, which makes the tool suitable for a variety of industries. To add a unit procedure, select the one you want. In this case, I'm going to add a reactor, so I go to Batch Vessel Procedure in a reactor and then click on any area of the flowsheet. Let's also go ahead and add a plate and frame filter. So I go to my filtration option and then I select plate and frame filtration and I place it to the right of my first unit procedure. As I mentioned earlier, a unit procedure consists of different operations. Therefore, the next step in our model is to add relevant operations to each unit procedure. Let's begin with the reactor. To add unit operations to a unit procedure, double click on the procedure to open the operation sequence dialog. For this example, we'll need to add three charge operations, a react operation, and a transfer out. Let's begin by adding the charges. To add the charge operations, select charge from the list and double click on it to add it to the operation sequence. 
You can also use these buttons to add the operations. Furthermore, we need to add a stoichiometric reaction operation, so I select it from the list, double click on it, and finally, I'm going to add a transfer out operation. As you can notice, names were automatically given to the operations that were added. However, you can change the names to your convenience. For example, to change the name of the first charge operation, I first need to select it and then click on the rename button. Let's rename this charge to charge heptane. You can then click OK to accept the change and the name will be automatically changed. Let's also go ahead and change the name of charge 2 and charge 3. Charge 2, I'm going to change it to charge reactant A and for my charge 3, I'm going to rename it to charge reactant B. I'm going to leave react 1 as it is and then I'm going to change my transfer out to transfer to plate and frame filtration PFF 101 which corresponds to our second unit. Let's now click OK to continue. Next, let's open the operation sequence dialog for the filtration procedure P2. Notice that a filtration operation has been added to its operation sequence by default as this is the main operation for this procedure. Let's also add a wash cake operation and a transfer out operation to complete this sequence. Leave the names as they are and finally click OK to complete this operation sequence. Now that we have completed the operation sequences for both unit procedures, we can proceed to add the streams. In order to add streams, you first need to select connect mode from the main toolbar. Notice that the pointer indicates that you are now in connect mode. To add a feed stream, click on an empty area of the flow sheet and then click on the inlet port of your unit procedure. At this point, it is important to mention that all inlet ports are equivalent to each other in vessel procedures such as this one. However, stream ports can have specific purposes depending on the unit procedure. Furthermore, in this reactor, all outlet ports are also equivalent to each other with the exception of the top outlet port which is dedicated to venting. A convenient way to view port dedication is to bring up the help facility of the unit. Let's bring up the help facility of the filter by right-clicking on the filter and then selecting help from the context menu. Through this help facility, you can see if ports have a specific purpose. For this filter, an inlet port is dedicated to the feed, while two outlet ports are dedicated for the vent and cake outlets. The help facility of Super Pro Designer that you see on my screen is available for all of the different components of the program. So when in doubt, remember to use this facility. OK, let's now continue with the model. For the reactor, we still need to add two inlet ports, one which will be dedicated to the charge of our component A and another one which will be used for our component B. Furthermore, we need to add a vent stream for this procedure, which we can do by clicking on the vent outlet port and then double clicking on the flow sheet. For Next, example, we can add let's an say that we would like to change the to name of stream from procedure S1 one, one to procedure two, a wash stream for our cake wash, a cake outlet stream, and finally two extra outlet streams. Super Pro Designer also allows you to change the name of your procedures and streams to your convenience. Let's go ahead and change some stream names. To do that, right click on the stream and select Edit Tag Name from the context menu. Through this dialog, you can change the name of the stream. Let's change the name of this feed stream to represent the component that we'll add through it, heptane in this case. When I press OK and go back to my flow sheet, you'll see that the name of the stream is updated. Let's also do the same for our cake stream. We can call this one cake. 
This concludes part one of this tutorial. Please make sure to watch part two where I'll finalize this model. Thank you very much for your attention.